So Birdemic 2 just came out, and let me be the first to say that it was massively disappointing. Now I know some of you might be saying, why would you have high expectations for Birdemic 2? And it's because I liked the first movie. Lots of people liked the first movie. It was so bad that it was good. To me, it's the best worst movie ever made. Better than The Room, better than Troll 2. It's consistently entertaining, and I laughed my ass off. Now when a movie like that winds up getting so much popularity, the director usually finds out one way or another that people only like it because it's bad. It's like a hundred million dollar picture. Hollywood style. You think this was like a hundred million dollar picture? And at that point you can either argue against it. Look, I'm not a fucking retard like Michael Bay or other people running around in that business or Ellie Ross making the same shitty movies over and over again. I'm the only genius in the whole fucking business. Or just run with it. I'm happy where we are and uh, hopefully thank you for all the fans and see the room. Uh, you brought me a gift. Yeah, this is good for you first. Oh, look at this. It's the Tommy Wiseau bobblehead. There you <laughs> go. Oh, yeah. They're earning their money. Now I love that James Wynn used this as an opportunity to try and promote his film. Are you ready for pandemic shock and terror? How many beer have you drank? And I was really excited for the sequel, but it just sucked. Now that it actually tried to be funny, it was no longer funny. I feel like the sequel would have been much better if the first movie didn't get famous beforehand, because the entire movie just references itself. It's literally the same thing again, but worse. Part of the charm of the first film was how obvious it was that they had major budgetary constraints. When James Wynn says it was made for less than $10,000, you sure as hell believed him. But now with this new film, it's almost impossible to distinguish which of the mistakes were genuine and which weren't, because in an attempt to capture the essence of the first film. They intentionally made poor editing choices. The filmmakers simply aren't able to recreate what made the first film special because everything that made it special was unintentional. It's like how the father of David after the dentist keeps trying to make him act cute in front of the camera. If anything, this now validates the first movie because now we know what it looks like when they actually try to do something bad. Yes, there are some pretty hilarious moments in Birdemic 2, but there are very few of them and they're surrounded by a lot of nothing. I don't understand how it's supposed to be funny if all the joke is is just a reference to the first film. Yeah, I know that happened. That's why I'm watching the sequel. And now that I've seen this film being completely bored out of my mind watching a worse and more disingenuous version of something that I've already seen, dare I say it, but I feel like the first film had a sense of adventure to it. It was an amazing story to watch unfold. And by amazing story, I don't mean Rod's story. I mean James Wynn's story. When you watch the movie, you're watching the story of how James Wynn decided to spend 10,000 fucking dollars. And that was a masterpiece on its own. But now everything seems so forced. See, this is why parody movies like Black Dynamite Dynamite are so respectable to me. You can tell that they know what they're doing because they're able to capture the essence of what they're parodying so accurately. But somehow when this movie tries to parody itself, it falls short. People found enjoyment out of the first movie because of how horribly opposite the final product of the film was from what the director originally envisioned it as. Well, at least we know his efforts are consistent now, because now that he wants us to laugh, it's just not funny. I'm really hoping 2013 picks up sometime soon, because if the movies I'm looking forward to don't impress me, then 2013 really will be the year of shit and disappointments. And trust me, nobody wanted for this film to be entertaining more than me. I made a cover song for the Birdemic 2 soundtrack contest and won, but I just can't convince myself that I liked it. Now don't give up hope for all of James Wynn's other films. Remember, the entire purpose of this film was just to provide fan service. I think that Birdemic uh, is, is really bigger than, uh, than Tommy Rapunzel the room. The room because it has a, it, it, there's a sincerity to it. There, it has it has a bigger message. It's not just a horror film, a stupid story, uh, uh, or just a love story. Or Absolutely just... right. Yeah, yeah. It, it has a global point theme that hits you. Right. Uh, despite but, all but you're not trying to cram it down anybody's throat. I am a different class of filmmaker. I am in the school of Hitchcock cinema. Okay. 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 And there is structure to it, despite in the, it's a romantic thriller structure, despite its imperfection. The movie became a hit. It's good to see that he's still convinced himself that he knows how to direct movies. Because if he ever makes a successful bad movie ever again, it's gonna be because he tried to make a good one. You know, I, I, I admire Tom Rousseau uh, for daring to make a movie for what money he has. Would you, ever, would you ever consider a collaborative effort between you and Tommy? No. Just hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, hanging out. Hanging out with my family.
the oh, 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 I'm healing myself. Get away from me, you There's fucking still a guy. asshole. Fuck. There's still one guy. I fucking live. <laughs>